Dr. Michael Mann, climate scientist, professor, and director of the Penn State Earth Systems Science Center. His website, michaelmann.net. And, um, and the author, I don't, have, I don't have it in my bio for you, Dr. Mann. I'm sorry. Your, your most recent book was? Oh, it's The Hockey Stick and the Climate Wars. The Hockey Stick and the Climate Wars. Thank you. It's brilliant. And, <laughs> and I'm, I, but I'm, my memory for things like that is terrible. So tell us, what, what did the federal government just tell us? Thanks, Tom. It's always great to be with you. Um, you. So I know it's sort of feeling like the movie Groundhog Day, because I think we had a, a conversation very much like this one uh, just about a month ago yeah. uh, when the IPCC released their latest report on climate change impacts, the conclusion of which was that climate change is no longer uh, a distant problem. Um, it's something that is impacting us negatively now where we live. And this latest report uh, by the U.S. National uh, Climate Assessment, um, this is an assessment by uh, American scientists, um, but it's a, a similarly authoritative, um, heavily um, reviewed uh, assessment of the state of the science. They come to more or less the same conclusion. Uh, the, the bottom line of this latest report is that climate change is impacting us here in the U.S., negatively now when it comes to extreme weather, when it comes to uh, increasing uh, coastal flooding uh, from sea level rise combined with increasingly strong uh, hurricanes, um, drought, epic drought over large parts of uh, the south central U.S. and the western U.S., um, record heat, uh, and record wildfire. We are seeing the symptoms of human-caused climate change uh, play out before us. And that's basically what this report is telling us yet again. Yeah. Um, hopefully, the message is starting to get through. Uh, the science is in on this. Climate change is real. It's caused by us, and it's already a problem. It will be much worse if we don't do something about it. Well, and in fact, it looked to me like uh, this report is suggesting that within maybe two generations, by the, by the uh, 2070s roughly, most of the United States would have a climate not that different or not that dissimilar from Phoenix, Arizona right now. Uh, that's right. Uh, I mean, what, what we can actually see this if you uh, look at... Um, Looking at the front cover of the report. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, well, I mean, you know, you, if you talk to gardeners, you talk to people who spend a lot of time uh, outdoors, um, uh, they'll tell you that we are seeing... Uh, an increasingly early uh, spring in many parts of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, that might not have been true uh, this year. We had an, an unusually uh, cold winter over large parts of the U.S. But if you look at the trend, if you look at the trend over 10 years, 20 years, the longer-term trends, we are seeing a very clear uh, movement towards uh, earlier springs, towards, uh, you know, basically the a state like uh, Nebraska increasingly having the climate of a state like Kansas and a state like Kansas having more of the climate of a state like Oklahoma. Um, and so we're already seeing that march of climate zones poleward with uh, fairly dire impacts. Right. And, the, and this late uh, spring that we saw, there are those who suggest that th the mechanism might have been that the temperature gradient, the difference in temperature between the mid-latitudes where we are and the northern latitudes, the polar latitudes, uh, used to be great enough that a giant wall of air, a barrier of air, kept the jet stream to the north and kept that polar air to the north, and that because the Arctic is warming so much faster than the mid-latitudes are warming, and please correct me if any of my language on this is wrong, um, but because that's warming so much more rapidly, that difference, that, that gradient, that uh, difference in temperature has diminished to the point where that wall of air can no longer keep the jet stream way up there north and thus keep the Arctic air north. So the Arctic air is sliding down to the mid-latitudes where it is gathering heat and then taking it back up to the Arctic and speeding up further the rate at which the Arctic is melting. Yeah, I mean, there, the, um, now, and this is sort of at the, you know, the forefront of where the science is, and there's still a, a debate within the climate research community uh, about, you know, the, the precise relationships here. Mm -hmm. But there does seem to be mounting evidence, uh, multiple studies now that suggest that the melting of Arctic sea ice, uh, which is warming the very high latitudes, and it is, as you say, it's changing the sort of variations 
uh, of temperature with latitude, uh, and it's those variations of temperature with latitude and with altitude in the atmosphere that actually determine the jet stream, where it is. Right. And so those um, changes in, in Arctic sea ice and the changes in temperature that are associated with that are, are changing the jet stream uh, potentially in a way that favors the sort of winter that we just saw, where we had, yes, cold conditions uh, back east, but we had uh, unusually warm conditions on the west coast over a large part of the western U.S., uh, record temperatures in part of Alaska, record drought in California, and flooding in the Pacific Northwest because right. of that migration of the jet stream, the jet stream right. that normally would bring moisture to California, much needed winter moisture to Southern California, instead veered north. Because uh, the thing that is that is regulating the jet stream now, instead of being temperature gradients and air currents, is simple geography. It's it's hitting the, the mountains uh, down the Alaskan coast and, and down all the way or down through Alaska and all the way down to uh, uh, what would it be Arizona, I guess, where the where the Rockies pretty much kind of peter out. Yes, the jet stream sort of likes to lock into certain configurations that are more or less uh, determined by the orography, where the mountain ranges are. Um, and because of that, it can tend to sort of flip from one state to another, rather than just sort of moving gradually because of things like mountain ranges. It has certain preferred configurations, and we may be pushing it into a different configuration, favoring a configuration that gives us the sort of winter that we saw. And right. again, that's being debated within the scientific community, but there's increasing evidence that that may be a real connection. And if it's true, it means that drought in California may actually become worse than the current models even project. Right. And and, and it also, uh, from what I've read, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong on this, it also could suggest that we are trans we are more aggressively transferring heat from the latitudes where we live up to the polar region than we would be otherwise when this air mass basically slides down over us and then slides back up over the, you know, it's like a yarmulke sliding off the side of the head and then back, you know, kind of thing. Does right. I sense? mean, it, it, there are uh, a whole bunch of potential sort of unexpected, you know, surprises that, yeah. that may be in store because of you know, the, the vagaries of how this system works. And we're still working out the details, but the, you know, that's, that's not something to give us comfort. What it means is that we could be in for, you know, other surprises, uh, right. surprises that don't work out in our favor. Yes. Um, and, and this report, uh, I haven't read word for word. I've read a good chunk of it. I didn't see anything about even, you know, some of the more uh, out of the edge ones, like the one that, that, that I, I talked about in that video we did uh, about, you know, what happens if the methane starts right. melting in the Arctic. Um, these, this is a very conservative report. Oh, and these reports always are. These are assessment reports, which means they're you know, written by um, typically you know, tens if not hundreds of scientists um, mm. and many more hundreds of contributors who provide um, input. And so by its nature, it's sort of a lowest common denominator, scientifically speaking. Um, right. It is, you know, the conclusions are those conclusions which a large number of climate scientists can agree upon. Right. And because of that, uh, by uh, its nature, it's a conservative report. And so what should concern us is the fact that these very conservative assessment reports, like the IPCC report that came out last month in this latest national uh, assessment report here in the U.S. that just came out uh, today, um, the fact that these very conservative uh, reports are portraying climate change impacts uh, in as dire a way as they are um, is, tells us that there really is a problem here. Yeah, and, and it could be a hell of a lot worse than we think. Yep. Um, Dr. Michael Mann, author of The Hockey Stick and the Climate Wars, michaelmann.net, his uh, M-A-N-N, -N, his website. Thank you so much for being with us, sir. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Tom. Ditto. Back at you.